Um, good evening, everyone. We're going to call the meeting tonight to, for public safety, November 9th, 2022. Um, first item on the agenda is from our um, police chief, the report from our police chief, Chief Slavin. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Um, good evening, first chief. item here we have tonight is police clearance and juvenile co uh, contact reports for the month of September 2022. Does anyone have right. any questions? Any questions for the chief? Commissioner Zygmunt, though, and then Commissioner Arnie. Thank you, uh, Chair, Chairman Brockington. Chief, just, uh, you know, it's this continuing discussion every month in looking at the, the clearance statistics, our total theft numbers uh, in 2022 continue to run almost double those of 2021. So two questions, um, you know, are there, uh, are there preventable things that we can do? Are there things that both, you know, residents as well as the businesses uh, can do to, to improve that. And the other piece of it is obviously, you know, um, how in the current state and third number of, you know, officers and field personnel, can we better allocate resources to take some better measure control there? So looking just for the, a continuing sense that these things are, are big and, and, and under your microscope day in, day out. Yes, sir, Commissioner. Obviously the theft numbers are alarming and that they are double from what we were seeing the previous year. There are a number of reasons that play into that uh, increase in, in, in the number of total thefts. Uh, we've talked about uh, retail theft as being one of those impactors as well in that uh, the theft from auto spike we saw recently in our area, the theft of catalytic converters in our area, uh, the mail thefts that we uh, made the arrest on at the Elkins Park uh, Post Office uh, most recently, there was a number of thefts attached to that one job there was over 22 charges filed against that individual. Um, so that's one incident, that's one actor with 22 jobs on um, that we arrested for that. Um, these types of incidents, they, they do, they, they, uh, they rise and fall. Um, there's there's a, obviously an increase now, I think for more people being out, as I said, there's a, there's a, a wide number of reasons for that. With that being said, um, it's incumbent upon us to share information, to encourage our, our residents to uh, let us know when they see something suspicious right away. We'll have our sector officer out there right away. Our response times are, are uh, within minutes. We'll get out there and investigate the issue right away. But we need the community's eyes and ears to be successful. We can't do this alone. Um, this is a group effort. And I'm asking the community to continue to help us uh, when they're out there looking around. They see something suspicious. Please notify uh, 911 and let an officer go out there and, and, and take care of it. Don't push it off or think someone else will call, um, you know, because uh, all these examples that we've been successful over the years, I can point to a, an alert citizen or someone who, who had the, uh, you know, the four, whatever thought to call 911 and get the police en route there. And we were able to successfully intervene on those cases. So um, to answer your question, we'll put it, we'll put tips out throughout the year on our website as well. Um, as far as theft from autos or any other pattern crimes that come up with those thefts to let our, our residents number one to know so they know what's going on and what they can do to protect themselves. So we'll continue to update that information on our social media as well to get the message out to our residents. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Commissioner Arnold. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Chief, um, I want to touch on a couple of things. Um, I'm glad Commissioner Zygmafell raised that one issue, and I appreciate the efforts for um, proactive measures to address um, some of these um, you know, increases in in thefts. And with respect to the retail theft, I notice when I look at the um, the dailies that come out, um, th there are some locations within the township that are just day in and day out, and sometimes multiple times in a 24 hour period, um, calling for retail theft, um, uh, you know, law enforcement is responding, doing what they, what they can do to address it. Sometimes people are gone. Um, but, but I'm wondering if there is um, some mechanism or some plan or some thought as to how we might work with these retail establishments to either um, ensure that they have security on site or um, to create details where um, Perhaps a couple times a week, they may uh, hire uh, an off-duty police officer who's interested in in working that detail. Um, ha has have you and your staff thought about ways to um, approach that particular issue? 
Yes, Commissioner, we have. Um, usually we'll see those, those type of details around the holiday seasons. We'll see the increases in those details. So we have offered those to uh, our business partners in the community uh, during those seasons for sure, um, every year since I've been here uh, with that. Um, retail theft is a reactive crime for us. It's not something that uh, you know, we're sitting in a store right, waiting for this to happen. This is when a, a business owner calls and says they've had an incident at their location and the police respond to that. So really, it's a reactive uh, response on our part to that part of it. Um, so the level of that and, and how frequent it occurs, we do have certain locations, as you mentioned, that are uh, keeping us busy. Um, at that area. We have worked with with some of these businesses uh, to let them know, you know, bring security and several have security and we're still seeing an increase in crime. Uh, in those areas. Um, some of it's tied to the penalties and, you know, these things we're getting repeat offenders involved in these incidents, to right. be honest with you. Um, so uh, within the law, we're doing our end of it and, and, you know, trying to hold those responsible for, for committing these incidents. Um, we are seeing an increase in retail thefts, as I said, uh, steady increased, not to the extent of the, the, the total theft number, but we are seeing a steady increase in those incidents. Again, yeah. that also is more people out and about as well. Um, in our community uh, from the previous year in comparison as well. Conversations with these businesses are ongoing when we do have an incident there, how we can improve. Uh, for example, Wawa, I'm in contact with Wawa on a regular right. basis um, with their staff. That's one example I can point to uh, in the past week uh, where I've been in touch with them uh, as well and how we can do a better job with that working together to uh, limit these incidents. Uh, and that includes them hiring security. Um, I've put additional personnel out there um, especially uh, on the weekends when we had uh, after games, that kind of stuff to have a presence out there is the deterrent effect. I'm doing everything I can to do that. So we fly the flags, we call it, get the police car out there. Sure. The people see the Cheltenham police are out there uh, as a deterrent to this um, issue. Yeah. So that, that, that's exactly what I have in mind. And in particular, the retail establishment that I had in mind and, and your point is well taken that uh, Cheltenham Township police in, in this regard um, your actions are necessarily reactive, right? You get a call yes. and you have to respond. That's and and I, I think by um, not only having your department be proactive, in which case we're sort of subsidizing uh, some of the efforts uh, uh, at security that some of these retail establishments should be implementing on their own. But, but I think that, that um, in order to avoid it, always being reactive, having these retail establishments um, expend some effort and finances to um, ensure that it's not react reactive, it's proactive, I, I think may be worth, um, you know, pressing even a little harder than maybe we have. So just a thought. Well taken. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Thank you. My, I'm sorry, I do have one, one okay, other, go ahead. Mm -hmm. if I may. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and it goes back to what I've talked about frequently over the past months, and it has to do with um, speeding in the township, uh, Chief. Uh, for, for a while, over the summer, um, uh, you know, the department really stepped up, and, and that was appreciated. I mean, back in July, there were 72 um, uh, violations issued. Uh, back in June, 43. Fortunately, it appears that in August, and I didn't say anything last month, but uh, and now in September, the numbers have dropped off significantly. And um, uh, honestly, uh, it, it, we need to get that back up. Uh, the, yes, the, the, um, it's not acceptable. I mean, four is, I mean, yeah. you, could sit, you could sit out on my street uh, for an hour and pick up four if, if yeah. you're you really wanted to. Um, so uh, I, I just want to press the issue. No need to respond or, you know, um, I know that you're working on it, but, but I just want to encourage you to um, reprioritize to the extent, the extent you're, you can, because uh, we need to get those numbers back up. Commissioner, I would just like to let you know, I do agree with you. That is a priority for us. We're doing the best we can with the manpower and resources we have available to meet that community directed priority. I know that's a priority in our community. I have taken steps to do that. I've set details up to do that, to address that issue, to get creative, as you say, to get creative outside the box ways to do that. Um, during the summer months and the last month we did have a slowdown because there's other demands that were coming into place, especially with manpower, people being off, et cetera, et cetera, not to make any excuses. It is on my radar. It is a priority for me. Uh, we will be putting out traffic details uh, again in the near future. Um, we will be uh, forcing speed in those areas. I've, I've uh, passed this on to Commissioner Rappaport as well in some of our conversations as well. 
and other commissioners in the, uh, have asked about it as well. So um, that is on the radar that we will continue to do those details. Much appreciated. Thanks, Chief. Mr. Chairman, Thank that's you. all I have. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Commissioner Armand. And Chief, I just want to throw something in there too, because I know I'm getting calls with parents around the schools and people still are passing school buses. So if your officers can be out there, especially around our schools during um, dismissal times and when kids are being dropped off from school, um, people are still are disrespecting the whole school bus thing, which is absolutely amazing to me. Absolutely amazing that they're it, doing it, that. In fairness, Chief, I have seen, at least in, in Glenside, a, a pretty robust presence at, at drop-off and pick-up. So pick up. That, that is appreciated. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. Hey, Chief, um, I'm going to go back to the um, to the, the, the retail stores in reference to all the um, shoplifting. Would, do you think, in your experience, having more security there would be a deterrent for people to, to not shoplift? If there was, the, you know, actually some type of security there that was in uniform, so a lot of stores use plain clothes people for security. But do you think it would be more of a deterrent if they were in uniform? Or... Some of our commercial stores, excuse me, sir, I'm sorry. Some of our commercial stores do use uniform. Some of the other uh, retail establishments also use plain clothes for obvious reasons, right? right. Um, um, so there is a combination of the two at, at different stores throughout. Uh, our, our uh, business districts, um, as far as that goes, you would hope that would be a deterrent to having someone at the front door. Um, I'm more concerned about the uh, impact of the penalty. If this is for, you know, the penalty is not severe enough or something along those lines where I seem to be thinking in my mind that there's no, you know, I'm going to be getting ROR bail. I'm going to be getting out on this. And, you know, um, it's to, the, to me, that's one of the inf influencing things, the penalty involved in it. Um, we do get a lot of repeat offenders in retail theft incidents, um, you know, and our officers respond and they, they, they pretty much know a lot of the, the, uh, the actors involved as mm -hmm. well. Um, to answer your question, though, I think having that uniform presence in there is a help. It's one more one more thing to maybe act as a deterrent as well as, you know, to prevent those incidents. Uh, a lot of these stores have done that uh, to answer your question, to have a uniform person out there um, to, to try to act as a deterrent. But uh, how successful they've been, we were seeing the increases. So I would say that that's not doing it on its own. Okay. All right. Commissioner Rappaport, did you have something? I kind of can see I, it. Yeah, I, I have actually a couple of things on that on that topic. And I think I will save them uh, for not at this meeting. Okay. We can All discuss right. these ideas some other time. All right. Any other questions in reference to item 1A? Not seeing any, I call for the approval for tonight's uh, item 1A on our report. All those in favor of approving uh, the uh, police report say aye. 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 All right, we move on to item 1B. Consider recommending that the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order from Gauls LLC in the amount of $3,405.36 for the purchase of three ballistic body armors for the new sworn in officers who will be who will graduate in December. Uh, Chief, do you have a date yet for the graduation ceremony for those officers? I do. I believe it's the night of the Board of Commissioners meeting, uh, the 16th. Is that correct? Yeah. So it'll, it won't be in person. I guess you guys will be in person, but we'll be on Zoom. Chief, you're on, you're on mute. I'm sorry, sir. Sorry about that. I believe it's the night of the commissioners' meeting. Uh, okay. Is when their graduation is. Um, we have two officers in Delaware County um, Police Academy and one officer in Montgomery County Police Academy, and their graduations are the same night at the same time. Um, so it's going to be a divine conquer with my staff, uh, so we can have staff representation at these events, and uh, we'll have probably have a guest appearance oh, okay. in, for the commissioners' okay. meeting in my in my steed there, so we can attend uh, these. Um, as I said, this is for the three new officers that we have conditional officers out on that will be graduating in December and joining our department. Okay. Any questions in reference to item 1B? Hearing and seeing none, I call for the approval of item 1B. All That's those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, guys, stay. And we'll talk about breaking back later. 
Um, we're going to move on to uh, item two, report from the fire marshal for the month of September 2022. Mr. Lynch. Good evening, commissioners. Good evening, Good evening. Mr. Lynch. Status quo on uh, everything. I just want to point out as far as uh, the minutes of fire board, you'll see the membership uh, for each company continues to climb. So that's a plus in the right direction as far as I'm concerned. Um, other than that, does anybody have any questions on the submitted reports? Any questions? Commissioner Zygmuthel. Thank you. Um, not so much a question, Scott, just a, a recognition as you, as you run through the reports and you look at the number of participants at each event, you know, Glenside is in, you know, is averaging 12, 12 firefighters per event, but not far behind. You have Elkins Park and Cheltenham at eight and Lamont at seven. I think it just speaks to the fact that every fire event, um, we, we are able to, to muster uh, the volunteers and the folks who recognize the importance of having an effective volunteer fire company. And uh, to that point, um, I hope that the fire companies know that the board and our commitment, <coughs> the president just mentioned in the budget, we've increased our allocations and we recognize that there may be other things that we can do to assist them from a capital budget standpoint. So just an acknowledgement that, uh, that the level of response and clear efficiency is something that continues to reassure those of us who live in the township. So thank you. Now, and I just want to add one thing while we're talking about membership. Uh, tomorrow night at seven o'clock at the Edge Hill Fire Company is the Fire One Certification Graduation Class. Uh, I believe Lamont has uh, five, I think, that are in the class. They have four or five more going into spring. Glenside has a couple graduating from this class. I, my numbers might be off on that, but. Um, and I know Cheltenham has one or two graduating from this class also. So um, the, uh, the people that are joining the fire companies are uh, definitely uh, starting out in it for the long haul with spending, you know, 188 hours, you know, mm -hmm. in this class, which speaks volumes because uh, honestly, Ken and John Slave and I, when we started, it was two weekends. That was it. It was 32 hours. So um I give a lot of credit to these guys that are taking 188 hours now out of their time to do all this. And then we had to clean the horses. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you did. <laughs> yeah, you, you did. We, we did. Wow. Um, any other questions? Hey, yeah, hey, hey, Scott, on yes, those um, those new firefighters that are being um, graduated, is there any way we can bring them to the meeting and sort of welcome them? Uh, do you have any plans to do that? That we can kind of give them a big virtual commissioner hug or something like that, that we can. No, but I can send a request to the chiefs um, and uh, see if we get them to the uh, November commissioner's meeting. And, uh, you know, if not, maybe December. Maybe December, um, yeah. Maybe. I, just, I, I just think it would be nice to sort of yeah, welcome them. Yeah. In the so I was just gonna suggest, um, commissioner, they've been gone two days a week plus weekends for the last, either month or three months i think it's a great idea but i'm going to suggest you wait till january give That's them fine. just give them a little time with their yeah. families and the holidays yeah. right. Very good point. I, I totally get it i i totally agree with you but i still i would love to bring them in to welcome them yeah i will uh, i'll arrange that for january january okay fantastic thank you any other questions commissioner Rappaport? i'm sorry thank you um um uh, Mr. Fire Marshal, yes, you have been very responsive about giving all kinds of data, all sorts of things. What I still don't see is a simple response time for each of our companies to their to the to the incidents. And I know the county gives that information. I know they give it in multiple parts, so you have to do your own calculations from the time of dispatch to the time that water is put on the fire or whatever, you know, the, the actual uh, uh, showing up and, and responding to the incident. But that's what I think would be most helpful of all, almost all the numbers is the response time. Um, because I think that over time gives us the way to assess 
frankly, how, how effective we are at getting to emergencies and being able, you know, logistically to, to really uh, do what we're supposed to be doing. So whether it's a function of, and I, I imagine that'll improve at nighttime just because there's less stuff on the road, less ops. But I mean, those are the kinds of things that I think we need in the calculus. So um, if there's a way of doing that that isn't uh, extraordinarily time consuming on your part, even if it means a trade-off on some of the other data that we're not able to really use as effectively, I think that would be a valuable uh, piece of input. So yes, I have a great idea about that. Would I be able to maybe call you tomorrow and talk uh, talk about it with you prior, off of this, that we're sure. not wasting time? And sure, thank so I'll, you. I'll reach out to you tomorrow and show you. I, I kind of created something already. Great. I'll send that to you and let you take a look at it, OK? Thank you. Sounds great. OK with that? All right. Thank you, Commissioner. Fantastic. Any other questions for our fire marshal? Hearing and seeing none, I call for the approval of item two on our agenda tonight. Uh, all those in favor of accepting the fire marshal report, say aye. 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 Great. We're going to move on to the report for our emergency medical service director, Mr. Hundoff. Good evening. Um, good evening, sir. The report. One new thing that came up at a meeting, which is a good thing, is the um, and um, Chief Bartow and I have already met with him. Um, the county is starting a, a uh, response team for drug overdoses. Um, and it is not just for the emergency part of it, but it is to get them help and caring and um, treatment after the fact. Um, it was further discussed at a county meeting today. Um, the team exists, very limited hours. Some things had to get straightened out for them being dispatched. But uh, I know we've talked about mental health over the last couple of months and um, they they really are moving forward. There are some holes in the system that they've recognized and they're trying to fix them. Um, we had a request from a police officer for a family with some issues with a son and daughter and with our connections that we've made in the last couple of months, it was handled in less than a day. So just compliments where it's due. Um, both needed areas and the county is helping. So that came up today and I wanted to bring it up. Hey, Ken, question. Yes, sir. How is that, how is that different than the HUB program? Um, these are emergency responders. One is a paramedic, one is a, um, um, a drug specialist and it goes, uh, you know, we're, uh, we can treat someone if they're in crisis, obviously, but then we take them to the hospital and it kind of dead ends. And this is somebody that's following them all the way through with a patient who may or may not be known to us at the time. Okay. So that's the, so this is different. This is in addition to the hub program. This is for the emergency services specifically. Okay. Yep. Okay, thank you. Sorry. All right. Um, any questions in reference to Ken's report for October 2022? Hearing and seeing none, I call for the approval of item three on our agenda tonight. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Ken, you have number four, emergency management coordinator. Um, nothing, nothing to add except to let you know that we are monitoring the storm that was changed this evening to a category one hurricane. Um, frankly, yes, uh, probably an inch to two inches of rain. Um, we've talked to the fire department's water rescue task force ready to go, but um, frankly, I think probably our biggest concern is gonna be leaves in the drains because there's leaves everywhere. Nothing we can do about that. Um, Bo is obviously aware of it um, and um, but we are preparing. If it looks like it's going to turn worse or strengthen, um, then we will send notes out and let people know. But that's all. Nothing to add to the report. Hey, Ken, was that report, was it downgraded? or No, up, up, it was upgraded. It was okay. upgraded, which was expected. This is not a surprise. They expected to not get above a Category 1. Um, Unfortunately, um, it is going to hit some of the places in Florida that were hit uh, two months oh. ago, and 
um, the you know we're we're watching through our weather services and several others. Um, the airports are closed down there as of tonight, uh, as of tomorrow. Um, so we'll keep you posted. I think it's just going to be a rainstorm. Um, at the moment, we've not even seen anything about high winds yet. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any questions? Hearing and seeing none, I call for the approval of item four on our agenda tonight. All those in favor of uh, accepting the emergency management coordinator report, say aye. 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 All right, we're going to move on to five. Any old business for public safety? I have one. Um, Tamar, Chief, you want to talk about breaking bread for old business? Yes, sir, Commissioner. Um, tomorrow is our second uh, breaking bread event um, that we were going to have with Bethany. Um, it's a, it's a combined effort between uh, several organizations, uh, the NAACP ourselves uh, and uh, Bethany uh, Ostrowski putting this together um, to bring the police together with the community here. And I think it's a great idea. The first one was a huge success. I'm hoping to continue to build on that set, uh, success to increase uh, the opportunity to engage our community one-on-one, -on -one, to let them know what a great police department you have here, let them know about the great police officers we have here at one-on-one. -on -one. So the first one, as I said, if I can touch on that success, you know, in the next one, uh, it's great because that was a yeah. home run, the first one. So it was. I know you were there, Commissioner, and um, I'm yes. hoping to continue to build on this as we move forward uh, and other initiatives to take where this takes us to. But the idea is to build this relationship to uh, get to a point where we can have uh, conversations uh, where we trust one another. Basically, they trust us and, uh, you know, and, and understand our motives as well. So um, I'm willing to uh, put whatever we have to put into to uh, bridge those gaps and make that, you know, make our community uh, happy and, you know, understand what type of police department they have here. And that's my goal. Thank you, Chief. And I just say, if you come, come hungry. Yeah, the food's excellent also. <laughs> that <laughs> always come, helps, right? Yeah. <laughs> come, come hungry. Definitely. Any, old, any other old business for uh, public safety? Any new business for public safety? If I could just back up one, uh, we had a uh, coffee with a cop. I just want to comment on oh, yes. one side. Uh, it was a joint effort with the Abington Police Department since we border each other uh, right there. Um, it was a success. Um, we got to see a lot of people, you know, 20, 30 people at a time waiting for the train. That train leaves another 10 or 15 people come up. Um, we got to meet uh, officers from SEPTA Police also take part in this uh, event as well. So, um, you know, another effort uh, by the police department to improve community engagement out there. Uh, it was a success. We worked with a local business there, Elsie's El Cafe, um, who donated the coffee there. Um, just a nice event. Uh, Commissioner Armin was there and stopped by I mean, to see the, uh, the folks that were chatting with us. Um, just another effort, uh, another, another step in our effort to build uh, positive relations with our community. Thank you, Chief. Well done. Yeah, um, and Mr. Chairman, just, yes. just to echo, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it was a great event. There, there, there was a big turnout, uh, a, lo a, lot of, uh, a lot of folks uh, we're pleased to see. I think they were concerned at first, but then yeah. when they realized it was a fun event, police cars, what's going on? Exactly, yeah. they, they were okay, uh, and and really enjoyed um, getting a chance to, to have a quick chat with uh, with CTPD and other agencies yes. while they're waiting for the train. So thank you, Chief, for that, and thank Absolutely. you to to Elsie's for for hosting that. Thank you. Um, any other new business for tonight? All right, so we're going to go on to Citizen Forum. Allison, do we have any citizens? Um, I see Rochelle. Oh, oh Mr. Payne, I'm sorry. I, what's the first name, Mr. Payne? Go ahead. Hi, yes, this is Rochelle City and Alone Fine. Um, we are uh, residents at 107 Ashmead. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we've been trying to get um, some issues resolved for a while now, and I'm just hoping that I can get some clarification as to what we can do to get some help. Um, we have uh, an issue with very, very overgrown um, weeds that have now turned into basically shrubbery um, that are blocking a fire hydrant, blocking walkways, um, and are impeding our line of sight for driving, as mm -hmm. well as a um, electrical pole that has fallen and is um, basically, there's live wires that have a lot of tension on them and we just mm -hmm. trying to get some assistance and getting these issues taken care of. So okay. Could it help me out? Yeah, fantastic. I'm going to um, turn this over to our fire marshal, Mr. Lynch. 
so we can address all those three. Can you start off with the um, blocking of the, the, of the line of sight for the vehicles? Mr. Fain, I did see your, your PowerPoint and it was shared with all the commissioners and township staff. So I, I made some notes and, and Scott, let's start off with the, the line of sight with those um, shrubs that are kind of overgrown. Okay, I'm going to turn this over to uh, the to assistant Al? fire. I'm going to turn this over to the assistant fire marshal, code enforcement officer, who's been working on this. Al Sergio, yes. he's on the meeting tonight. Al. Yeah. Al, can you talk about that with the um, with the shrubs? I can. Hello, everyone. Uh, the shrubbery and the overgrowth um, is in front of the the gas works facility right there on Ashmead Road. I have been in contact with Philadelphia Gas Works, who maintains that property. Um, which is an entity of PICO with uh, the high pressure line uh, from the transcontinental, I believe it is, um, that runs through there. Um, they're going to have a crew come out and cut that entire area back um, five to 10 feet up that embankment, which will clear that whole area out. Um, oh. It'll expose the fire hydrant and it will also clear out a path, a uh, line of sight coming around that bend. Hey, hey, Al, did they give any type of um, ETA on when this will be done? I followed up with the foreman again this morning. Um, he's not sure of the time frame. Um, it is my second call to them. They are aware of it. And um, I asked them to get out there as soon as possible. And if nothing happens, I'll follow up again at the beginning of next week. But I'm pretty sure um, they'll get on it as soon as they can. All right, so my second thing was that there is this is the same shrubs that's forcing people to, to walk in the street also? I assume, I'm not clear if there's a sidewalk there or if it's just a grass path. Um, that area has been overgrown, obviously, for a number of years. Um, me here seven years, this is my first time um, working with the gas works and clearing that area would request okay. to clear that area. Um, okay. So my other question would be based on Mr. Uh, on the PowerPoint I received, was the live wires and the cables and the broken pole. What's going okay. on with that? That is a Pico pole replacement that was done. I'm not clear on when that was completed. Um, uh, there is a question for Pico to clear out the old pole. That is what is there. Um, there is a guide wire hanging, which is against the, the communication lines. It's not against the electric lines. Um, so I did go out there and verify that there is no uh, electrical hazard or danger going to happen with it. Uh, okay. But there are, it is a mess out there with the Pico poles. They are aware of it. And they were advised to get out there ASAP uh, to get that mess cleaned up. Okay. Rochelle, was there any other issues? I, I tried to address everything that was in the PowerPoint. Um, no, I think that's it. Um, just to be clear though, uh, Pico said it was not an electrical uh, hazard right now, or I'm sorry. I think I got now, that last When bit. I was out there, the line was hanging on the communication wires. It wasn't hanging on the electrical wires um, mm -hmm. that is hanging off. The pole is, the new pole is standing with new guide wires. Um, the old pole was on the ground with uh, the broken guide wire. And obviously there's uh, another broken pole standing next to the new pole. And they're gonna be coming out to clean up all the extraneous stuff? They were requested to come out and remove all the old poles and lines and everything that they removed from uh, the old pole that was there. And. Um, um, I don't know if you said, when did you um, contact them about that? I followed up with them again today. Okay. Um, I do not have an ETA with PICO, them being, uh, um, you know, an entity. Um, I'm right. at their speed right now. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate your efforts, everybody. Thank you very much for your attention to this. You're very welcome for reaching out on that. Commissioner Rappaport? Commissioner, if I can yeah. just add one thing. One, one second, Scott. Commissioner Rappaport? Okay. No, no. Let him go first. That, that's fine. Okay, go ahead, Scott. No, I just want to let everybody know, uh, we, Al and I are dealing with PICO throughout the township, throughout the entire township with their pole replacements, where they 
They have the new ones laying around to take the old ones out, put the new ones in, leave the old ones. And this isn't the only complaint that we've gotten from residents about the poles. And uh, as we get them, we're contacting the PICO and advising them we're getting complaints. They need to come out and fit, you know, get the poles out of there. So um, this is throughout the township and Al and I are working on that vigorously. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Rappaport? Yeah, um, and I, I don't know when the problem of line of sight actually started that, um, uh, that Ms. Sadie was, was referring to, but um, I'm concerned that we are just not getting the prioritization that is necessary. When line of sight is obstructed and it, it, it becomes a safety, a public safety hazard, they need to get out here and if they can't do it, they need to get a subcontractor out here to do the job. And I don't like the fact that Mr. Sergio said it's his second time following up. Okay. Um, no, I, I think it's time to get other intervention and uh, to demand the kind of priority that public safety deserves. Thank you, Commissioner. So, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I just- I agree. Really um, my, I agree my, more, ma'am. I agree question, more, thank you. My question, Scott, to you and to Al, and I guess to Bo also, if this was a private residence and we took so long, we would do it and then build them. Can we do that with Pico? That's just <laughs> the question. Because that's what we would do if it was a private resident. So I'm just curious if can we cut it back and then so tell Pico you took too long and build them? Just a question I'm putting out there. That no. listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer the question as honestly as I can. That would have to be an approval. I'd imagine through Allison and through you guys, and I'm not trying to throw anybody under the bus, but right. you know that, you know, when we have something like this, we, you know, we get the approval from the manager. Um, right. And, you know, so uh, if, if that's your desire, then we'll yeah. look into that. Yeah. Yeah. Commissioner Nard. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. I, uh, the concern with that is um, it's uh, two concerns. One, whether we would, the time involved, whether we would ever get reimbursed for that. Um, and two, our staffing needs or our staffing requirements. I, I certainly am sensitive uh, if it's a safety issue. Uh, we want prompt response, but I would argue more in favor of us insisting that uh, uh, whether it's a private residence or PICO or ACWA or anybody, that we have them do the work rather than uh, falling back upon uh, our staff doing the work. Okay. Any others, anything for anything else for Citizens Forum for tonight? Allison, any other hands up? I'm gonna call for the adjournment it. of tonight's public safety meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.